Welcome back. It is fantastic to have you here because today we're resuming work on the Massey Steam Hammer. My current objective is to get this ramshaft out of the machine as it is definitely in need of a cleanup. And the last episode, we succeeded in getting this pin out. Oh! Which will hopefully mean that this is on its way to being released from that. But first, I think we're going to have to get the top die out, which means it's time for a little bit of brute force. Whoop! What's it looking like? Design of this thing is a little bit annoying in the sense that to remove all these keys, you've got to do it from the back of the machine, which is way more difficult to access as compared to the machines that have the dies at 45 degrees. Uh. I think it needs some heat. There we go! Yee! There we go! All right, some shims. Ooh, that's interesting. Look at that little locating nipple. Interesting. Bring a mark, that's the front. Get that out of there. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Oh, oh, oh. All right, now what on earth is that? A little square up there with something in it. What is going on? So I was hoping that this would just drop off. Now there's no longer the die and there's no longer that little round key. It hasn't dropped off. And I've got two potential avenues of attack in my mind. One, We've got that little square at the bottom. Maybe that's connected to the shaft and we could lift and drop this block onto a peg for the inertia of this block to pull it off the shaft. But I'm also tempted to see if just heating it would be enough for it to let go. So I'm gonna get all this hot and no matter what, it's gonna be good for releasing it if it did get hot. So we're gonna get it super, super hot, see if it drops off. If not, we're gonna have to put a peg in the bottom and start trying to find a way to, uh, to drop it on the peg to release it. So you're telling me you need to give yourself an aneurysm getting that key out last episode and the thing still doesn't come out? Yes, that's correct. It is still not coming out. So you're doing the same thing. Heat, beat, repeat. You know what I'm saying? This really feels like sacrilege, what I'm about to do. Just, I just want to try it. And I'm only doing it because it looks like a lot of people have done it before. Oh, that feels horrible to do. That's not right. Oh, I'm gonna go to hell for this. I do not think that is moving. All right. Now it'll have been a hundred years of hammering that is holding it together, so. <laughs> Maybe this thing will never come apart. Plan number two then, eh? Cut it off. Just zoop! Right there. There's a lot of steam coming off it. Yeah, it's probably like burning oil. At least you know it is a genuine steam hammer. Hey! This is my quick release. <laughs> All right, line that up. In. Three, two, one. <laughs> well, that definitely did nothing. Let's do it again. Ah! <laughs> Any movement? Nope. Nothing. Hey, okay, what though? It's a good laugh. It is good fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's half the battle, you know. <laughs> no. I don't need that. <laughs> oh, what do we do? Hey, hammer. Gently, gently. This is literally like a, a bomb that hasn't blown up. <laughs> well, the, the oh, is it, how is, high up is it? It's poking out of the top. Oh, is that why? I pulled it up too high. I'm such an idiot. All right, so I pulled it up too high and now the piston rings are stopping it from coming down. All right, fortunately it came with a little piston ring squeezer. There we go. Three, two, one, bang. I wish I wasn't dropping this thing all the time. I'm concerned we could fracture it. Oh, I could just bolt it in place. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't push up very good. Yeah, but the holes go through, so you could just tie a piece of wire like you. Oh, does it go all the way through? Yeah. Oh, that's so handy. Well spotted, yeah. On Discord, they're saying, why don't you just undo these bolts and take the whole top off, and then that'll just come out. <laughs> That's a really good idea. <laughs> but we still then have the problem of this being attached to there. I don't, we don't know if it's better or worse. But yeah, I could see, like it means that we can't do the hammering thing anymore. What the hell is going on in here? On Master at it, there is a behind the scenes channel on the Discord. So if you want to see anything that's going on, not in the videos. We're also asking advice because clearly Alec doesn't know what he's doing on there. So if you know anything about machines, please join. Release yourself! What the hell is going on? What is happening? 
What is happening? What? Oh my goodness. This just fell out. What is that doing? Hello. So this little thing is what we've been hammering on this whole time, but it just fell out. This looks like it was some sort of plug. And now when we take our pusher, it goes in that far up the thing, which means we might just be headed on a track to actually release this thing. This is bloody good news. Come on! I got this thing so hot, it's had heat on it for like 40 minutes. I was this close to calling it quits. Oh my goodness, there it is. There's the shaft with the cutout for the tapered key. That was very stubborn. It did not want to go. Oh, that's been in there for over a hundred years. All right, real quick, I've got something to show you over here in the freezer. There is a time and place where cold turkey is really good. Like the day after Thanksgiving or Christmas. But it isn't necessarily the best way to break your bad habits. There is a better way. It's no crazy voodoo. It's today's sponsor, Fume, with their award-winning and innovative flavored air device. When we're thinking about a bad habit, it doesn't necessarily include entirely bad things. The act of fidgeting with a device, feeling the weight of it in your hand, and breathing through it doesn't necessarily have to be bad, and especially not with fume. Instead of vapor, it uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, it uses all natural, delicious flavors. You see, you take these cores, you insert them into the body of the device, and you breathe through them, and that's it. No electronics, no nothing. It feels good in the hand. It's perfect to fidget with. It's got an adjustable airflow dial and little clicky magnets. And Fume has served over 150,000 customers with thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. And so please join them in accelerating humanity's breakup from bad habits by going to tryfume.com forward slash Alex Steele. There's also a QR code. And use code Alex Steele to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's try. Fume, F-U-M dot com forward slash Alex Steele. Why did you print off a turkey which has all of its feathers on and not like an actual turkey you'd find in the fridge? This is not even, this doesn't even make sense. What are you talking about? <sighs> Next up, in order to get the RAM block out, we have to get the bottom die out, which has also been jammed in there with a big old key. At least this one has a key so you can just unlock it. Yeah, we might have to call a locksmith. No, you have the key. The key's in the lock. Yeah, I know, but you tried turning that sucker. I think you'll get this out in five minutes. Five minutes. Hey, that might mean I have time for a cup of tea. I just have a feeling it's gonna come out. That's the good type of feeling to have though. I'll take that. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a wrist breaker. What's the hole in the wood for? Are you familiar with... <laughs> <laughs> this goes there. Slide it through that. Doesn't line up very well. Here we go. Oh no, that's solid. I, when I said five minutes, I meant five hours. I got that mixed up. Yeah, yeah, you did. that? No, I think we're running out of oxygen, Jamie. The flame is changing color because we're running out of oxygen. Right, so since the big torch ran out of oxygen, we're now on uh, the more gentle heat. What I've learned in releasing a few stuck keys on this project is more heat, more better. Because every time I got something super hot, it works. So let's let that get super hot. And while it gets super hot, take the opportunity to get this ram out, pull all this stuff out of the cylinder. We can start having a look at this too. I'm gonna lift this gantry up. I don't really know how I'm gonna lift it out. Keep coming, keep coming. All the way to that hole. Jamie, do you reckon we can lift that by hand? If we lift, I'll chuck this under there. Slowly. Good. Oh, that would just destroy your hand if that fell. Gotta remember, don't put your hands underneath there or your penis. Yeah. Ah! I'm gonna make sure we don't drop this because it is held on very precariously at the moment. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Something else hiding up there. It's gonna come out only with some brute force. Right, we yank that ram out. Are you bloody kidding me? Look how close we are. Go. Okay, I think we're up. Ram, bam, thank you, ma'am. You still into what I did there? Right, so, looking at the piston, we have about this much good material, where it isn't just completely corroded 
down here, there is so much rust and pitting. It is just horrible, which is quite concerning, of course. You know, part of how this is going to work is it needs to be able to hold pressure to lift the ram. And a rusty, pitted piston probably seems like a great way for steam or compressed air to leak out. So this is going to be a big part of the project that we have facing us. What on earth to do with this nasty piston? This is where I'm going to have to uh, ask those of you that have experience with hydraulic cylinders, pneumatic cylinders. You've got a piston that's really badly corroded like this. What are you doing? Are you turning it down? Are you getting it ground down? Is it sometimes fine? Let us know if you know what you're talking about. So we've had that torch cooking on the key that whole time, but here's the deal. I have potentially a bruise or a broken rib and swinging the sledgehammer is causing me a lot of pain. The sledgehammer is also only 12 pounds in weight. What if we could make a very big sledgehammer? Do you remember when we visited WH Tilsley? I saw them drive keys using a chain and a big massive bar of steel. We're gonna make a key driving hammer. We were saving this for a project, keeping it secret, but what if I swung this anvil at the key? That might be the way. Yes! That is a big old block of steel. This is one of those times where it's like, don't do this at home. Come do some stupid stuff. I don't know if that's hitting it any harder than a sledge. Ah! Before you, you do dip down into the comments, there, there are ways that I could get that ram block out without taking the bottom die out, but I'm not exploring those avenues because I know the bottom die's got to come out for a lot of refurbishment anyway, so might as well get the bottom die out. That's why we're doing it. This key could be so stuck that you could hang 100 power hammers off the friction of the key alone. Look at that. I'm gonna have to break out a bit of alloy steel because this is ridiculous. Take that stupid key. I have never seen a key so corroded. You can see where it's shiny. That's just where it was contacting. So there's not a lot of contact, but there's a lot of corrosion. This thing has uh, spent many a night out in the open, that's for sure, in the rain. That key is definitely gonna need to be remade. Now we can take this die out, hopefully. This project just seems to be a battle of wills. What will give out first? A hundred years of corrosion, or my back. Oh, look at the amount of crud coming off of there, Jamie. Oh. And drop on your knees, bloody oh, hell. Try not to. Oh yeah, that is a die. Oh, I've never seen a die face with that much rust on it. Ew. Is it made out of that same stuff that they make um, sauna rocks out of? Yeah, actually. There's some new uh, fangled steakhouses where it's actually that exact material that they heat up in an oven and you cook your steak on. But you cook your steak on your table and it's on a 1900s power hammer die. Same color, same noise. I have never seen anything quite like it. Look at that filth. And there's just a random plate in there. This is really bad actually. Maybe I should actually be reassured that somebody else has probably done much worse things to this machine than I'll be capable of. I think one of these oh, has been earned. Bloody good shout, thank you. <laughs> That's hilarious. This will not come out from the bottom, and I could have checked that with a tape measure. This needs to come out from the top. So now that we've got the important parts off the machine, it is basically just a shell. I've had a look inside the cylinder, and overall, I'm happy with it. It stayed pretty well sealed from the weather. I've got to decide some sort of a plan of attack and I think it's going to be cleaning things up from the front back because those valves look scary. We're going to take the ram. We're also going to take the gland. We need the cylinder cover. Oh, that's this big old lump of cast iron. And then we need a mystery piece. I have absolutely no idea what this is, but I'm quite certain this is important. First, we clean. Let's 
Let's have a little examination here. Obviously, we know that's our RAM. The RAM goes through these two components. This quick refresh bolts into there. Now, here's something I noticed as I examined it. There is a little hairline crack running through the bronze. It would appear that there is a push fit bronze bushing that's been squeezed into there. And this provides a nice slippery surface for the RAM to slide on. And when that's bolted in, there's this additional little collar. And I don't know why there has to be a separate one, but there is this additional little collar that also lives inside the cylinder. It also has some little hairline fractures. Maybe nothing that we need to worry about, but maybe something, oh, actually, no, it's got a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven. Wait, I, I lost count of where the start is. This has a lot of cracks. So no matter what, you know, maybe just clean up and deburr that. Let's move up here. Top of our RAM, you see that we've got piston rings. These are little cast iron rings that actually interact with the cylinder. So that's the part that wears as opposed to the body, the piston itself. This appears to be installed onto the RAM shaft somehow. Okay, I don't know how much I need to do over there. But then I've got some mystery parts. These came loose, so I don't know exactly where they live or what orientation they go in the machine. I don't even know if this lives with that, but we've got a hole that's kind of close in size. And we have the same pattern on this surface as we do over here. I described it in the first episode. It's like there was a screw bouncing around in there and it was just striking the daylights out of it. This maybe lives above that. I assume, because that also has those similar strike marks, that that must therefore live in here. But it doesn't fit. Why does this exist? Does it slip into the head of our cylinder cover? And why is it there? I think it might be what you call a cushioning plug. I want this to fit in there. Let's see if the puzzle pieces fit. See that, it's gotta live there. It could be that that is designed to come in and out to let off pressure. Here we are in the machine, pretend we're in the cylinder. Imagine this ram comes up too high. It could strike this and just blow it off. And so potentially you need some way of buffering and dampening that upstroke and maybe this you see, it's got its own piston rings. In here, it does something for that. Very confusing. Why is there this unmachined thing? This needs to fit the whole way in. Ugh, there we go, we got it in that time. Why would that exist? You see this little nipple, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Right there. That looks a lot like this indentation right there. Maybe that strikes it. We should see, does this seat up there? All right, so this will just hang out on top of the cylinder and it must only go up and down in the, in the cylinder cover. So that means that this face here is uh, contacting with the power hammer in quite an important way. And it has also contacted that errant screw in quite an important way because it is just utterly destroyed. It looks, it looks awful. So my assumption here is that this needs to go in the lathe to get cleaned up. This shaft definitely needs to get cleaned up because otherwise that is just going to be abrading away these lovely bits of bronze and making them even worse. This bit of bronze might need completely remade and hopefully you will circle the like button like a shark in the ocean, stalking its prey before making dessert of the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with this series. I'd also love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. If any of you guys have any idea of what's going on here, please also go check out today's sponsor, tryfume.com forward slash Alex Steele. This project is going to be a beer myth and I am panicking lots. See you soon.